Total shutdown station one, CPH5. Chief overwhelmed by security challenges. Oh, oh. Um, hello and welcome to Today in the News on Bangalore. Here on Today in the News, uh, we read and give in depth analysis on some of the stories on the front pages of the paper. Also, take your insightful comment of what's going on here in Nigeria and across the world. Join us Monday through to Friday on Brandon Live. Good morning and a welcome to today's new song Vanguard Life. My name is Damilola Obushaki and I'm with my co-host Tasha Chukudi. And of course here on Today in the News we read and give an in-depth analysis on the stories making waves across Nigeria. And this morning we have interesting stories on the front pages of the papers. And uh, you know there are so many things like that on the border that Nigerians were expecting that very soon it's going to be open. But now it seems the president is still deciding and he's still considering this idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, he says uh, as soon as possible. Let's see how as soon as possible really means. Mm. And of course, uh, we have that talk though. Uh, the protests and some reactions from people on the front pages. But I uh, you know to get the story, let's uh, review the front pages of the papers and we'll be starting with uh, Vanguard. And here we have um, Ashton Ensa's protest. When in danger, use your arms. Inspector General of Police tells uh, policemen, directive in order, that's coming from Oandezi. Uh, Inspector General of Police statement, unfortunate, uh, that's coming from Ayo Adibanjo. Uh, Benue tribal leaders. Middle Belt Group kicks. Um, Junaid Muhammad says that it's clear government has gone aloof. An attempt to stifle freedom of expression that's coming from Chief Shunibari. Um, right to defense to self-defense belongs to Nigerians, and that's from Koda. Okore also says that another protest ill advised. CSO slam into the Inspector General of Police on directive. And you can see this on page five. On page eleven. Federal government says a strike. We've kept our promises with ASU. Also on page 8, no religious freedom violation in Nigeria. Federal government replies United States. Still on page 8, we have a Nigeria's population, now 206 million, says NPC. Election petition, Akeredoli Chegede in verbal war over attack on party members. Insecurity, Buari malls, uh, uh, malls are reopening of borders. Gany Adam says, uh, my guardian angel won't forgive me if I reconcile with or pass on job. And you can see that on page 10. Now the stories above the nameplate on page 7. We have a crisis deepens as APC expels an ETA, extends a tunnel of Bonis and caretaker Kakoliti. And uh, lastly on the front page of Ranga, we have revive uh, comatose uh, newspaper fans. And uh, NPAN tells the federal government. And uh, that's all on Vanguard, and from there we'll move straight to the punch. And on the punch newspaper, we have uh, the lead story APC leadership tussle. Expelled ex NWC members declare self chair. A neck extends a Bunis tenure. Otherwise, the says, I won't withdraw suit against interim committee. Ex vice chairman Ita vows. APC dissolves party structures. Uh, PDP demands ruling parties' uh, deregistration. Uh, stories above, we have Rep. Summons Auditor General over $36.1 million World Bank loan. You can see that on page 29. And on page 9, we have a religious right violation. Khan uh, Sokapu backs uh, U.S. Uh, federal government disagrees. On page uh, 32, marketers kicks against a uh, five naira reduction in petrol pump price on page eight also agrees to end strike today in the day says on third minute we have hoodlums attack uh, ondo monarch destroys palace you can see that on page four and lastly on the front page of the punch newspaper we have a uh, ondo apc pdp support supporters clash at tribunal scores injured you can see that on page 14 away from the punch move straight to the nation and um, on the front page of the nation we have an um, apc dissolved states and local government ward escorts Buni committee gets a six-month session opposition party accused of mischief 
and um, also there's a statement here. It says that NEC approved the immediate dissolution of the party organs at the polling units, ward, local government, state, and zonal level, as well as the non national working committee. Uh, component of the National Executive Committee. Now, to get this series, you can see it on the front page. Also, on page five, we have a Buari to governors work with local chiefs to tackle insecurity. Narrow devaluation risky for foreign currency loans, says a report. Banking sector recapitalis recapitalization coming. And you can see that on page five. Here, we also have Akirelo Mujagede begin a um, legal battle talks a storm by tribunal. Lastly, on the front page of the nation, we have a petrol to sell for 162.44 Naira per liter from December 11. And you can see that on page three. And that's all we have on the front pages of the papers this morning. I'll be going on a short break. And when we come back, um, we'll be joined in by our guests who will be analyzing them, some of the stories with us. Stay with us, we'll be back. And guess what I'm here for this morning? I'm here to discuss the issue of police killing, killing, killing that is going on in town. I'm sure nobody is happy about it here. I'm sure you feel ashamed to put on your uniform and move around town. I'm sure you feel bad about it. And don't forget that these arms we are carrying around was purchased for us with the money got in for members of the community. Because they are paying us to protect members of the public. So make we can carry that same gun, they kill members of the public. Where we're supposed to protect. They can never be happy with us. Very few of us will spoil the name of the police. For God's sake, why carry gun? Cock gun for where many people did. Can we not forget that thing with the teachers for academy now, or with the teachers for police college? Have you, and I don't forget, then talk say it is better to allow armed robber to escape than to kill what? Thank you. It is better to allow even armed robber to escape than to kill one innocent person. Have you, and I don't forget. All right, so welcome back. If you're just joining us, uh, this is Today in the News on Ranga Live. My name is Damilola Okushaki, and I'm with my co-host, Tresha Shukudi. Mm -hmm. And um, of course, uh, we've reviewed uh, some of the stories on the papers, and right now, our guest is joining us, and he's the person of uh, Biro Olajuibbe, Executive Director of Emergency and Risk Alert. Good morning, sir. Good morning. It's a pleasure being with you again. Thank you very much. Okay, let's uh, go straight to what we'll be talking about today. And as of the directive given by the um, um, IGP, Inspector General of Police, that's the uh, Mohamed Adamu, he ordered policemen to use their firearms to dis to defend themselves whenever they feel that their life is in danger. Now, reactions were divided on the directives, uh, you know, since yesterday. Many people have been talking about it. But I would like to know what you think about the, you know, this uh, directive given by the IGP. I think the Inspector General of Police should uh, go back to history on when Nigerian police force was sent to Nigerian police. In fact, it used to be FPF, Nigerian Police Force. But later, the name was changed to Nigeria Police because police is expected to be civil. Uh, and even in communication, especially in times of crisis, what ordinarily the police should what he has done is to give license to people to kill but what the communication could be better passed by saying that if your life is not a threat don't shoot it's a better way of passing the message rather than asking them uh, if your life is a threat uh, shoot that is uncivil that is uncivilized and that is not the conduct expected of a civil police uh, policing. So, like I, I, I disagree with that statement, it's not a language of democracy. 
I've just told you the same line, the same, the same message could be a pass in a very conflict or crisis sensitive way by saying that if your life is not a threat, don't shoot. As simple as that. So I think uh, either the Inspector General is having the challenge of uh, a civil communication or it is just reactive to the horrendous incidents that just happened. We all appreciate the fact that uh, many police officers have made sacrifices in the past, even some have been killed. And then we must equally bring on board too that a lot of Nigerians has been indiscretionally killed by police. As a matter of fact, that was, that was what necessitated the NSAS uh, campaign. And beyond that, you can see Nigeria being killed uh, even during the time of peace, unprovoked, even when there is no protest by police, which they often uh, classified as a, a, what do they call it, stray bullet. So I think uh, I, 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 Inspector General should be seen as leading a Nigeria police that is civil, that respects rights of citizens, that also uh, appreciate the fact that uh, crisis can only be de-escalated if communication is crisis sensitive appropriate and uh, civil in all respect. Okay, Mr. Aguero, many Nigerians are actually worried that, you know, the bad eggs, you know, in the forest, we uh, capitalize on these, you know, to arm uh, innocent uh, citizens. But apart from that, they have many questions on their mind. And, you know, part of this question is, how will the police force, how will the policemen determine when their lives are in danger? And, um, you know, how will this also affect them um, you know, Nigeria, um, Nigerians' uh, self-defense and many others, um, as especially, they're asking, is this not an attempt to stifle, um, you know, expression, freedom of expression? That's what I, uh, that, that's what I, the statement I made at the threshold of my uh, analysis, that what the police uh, officer, which is the IG, what he has done is to give license to kill. Because his words, his statement uh, could be misinterpreted and definitely will be misinterpreted by a police force uh, let me use the, that word now because he has uh, put the word out of the uh, 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 for uh, extraordinary expectation the Nigeria police force since they have reverted to that now uh, it's made, made up of largely uh, people that have capacity challenge that cannot competently uh, decipher uh, even the simplest statement. Not to talk of the one that look like, oh, we have the backing of IG, we have the backing of police, and uh, any any simple thing that could be more uh, uh, resolved in civil way could now be interpreted as threats to life of a police person or police officer and which who attract uh, a shooting so that is the fear of everybody and i've just said it no matter the provocation there's no police force uh, there, there's no police uh, information anywhere in the world that is not provoked provoked by criminals provoked by uh, uh, those who, who disrupt uh, order uh, okay. they are expected to kill but then every so society has conduct uh, I, 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 I put uh, all states across the world have pol what you call police conduct the okay Mr. Guerrero, um let's quickly talk about what expectation, the minimal expectation minimal uh, connotes the type of order that he has given yes Let's quickly talk about uh, you know what the Inspector General of Police said about uh, you know the NSARS uh, protest. You know he said um, NSARS uh, started as a result of uh, false information on the social media. He also added that you know the motive behind the NSARS protest was to attack the government 
and uh, he said uh, the reason was also to attack the police that can protect the citizens and corporate offices in the country. Now we've had uh, many people saying that you know this is wrong and this is not uh, right. What uh, you know the Inspector General of Police is saying, but I would like to get your reaction on this. Do you actually say, think what he's saying is true? <laughs> They, they have been bantering uh, their own conclusion of what answers meant around at the level of security is even shameful. For example, the army came up the other day that answers was meant to change regime, uh, that it was aimed at a uh, regime change. Uh, uh, Chief of Army staff was able to push that uh, narrative, which is untrue. The same narrative that the police is coloring with a uh, a better a, 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 a colony with a, a very sweet ignorance it shouldn't it shouldn't be interpreted like that and that is why we will continue to have crisis in this country once they, they, I, I, I'm, I'm wondering at the level of postmortem they have done in terms of uh, the genesis of answers which is expected of every uh, 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 security agencies uh, uh, formation if you have a problem like this, after that, you reflect, you do an introspection, you do a thorough research that will inform you the reason why this thing was there and what went wrong along the way. Not a blanket statement of uh, infusing your own uh, 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 conjecture into it. I, 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 the, the demand of answers, well, it, wasn't, it, it didn't start in a day. The campaign has been on in the last two years but the only thing is that it, it, it got traction it got traction during the last protest and then it snowballed into a national protest All right, Mr. this should be appreciated this should be classified and this should right, be understood Mr. so that we continue to have better security security that is not colored with politics analysis that is not blind that that is not colored with politics that, that will not help anybody and that will not promote progress and of course uh, promote the culture of human rights and the responsibility to protection All right, by uh, the state. All right, let's move on and let's still talk about insecurity and uh, you know the, the president is going to be summoned uh, tomorrow to explain uh, uh, how his administration has fared during uh, this period of uh, we battling with insecurity. Now, in a meeting uh, with uh, some of the governors, or with the governors rather, uh, he said that the federal government was looking into reopening the nation's borders uh, as soon as possible. And if we, we can remember, uh, one of the reasons why the borders was closed uh, was as a result of a proliferation of uh, small arms and also smuggling of drugs into the country. Now, in your own opinion, do you think that uh, this, the reason behind the border closure has really been achieved? Well, it's not even, uh, let, let me quickly state on the appearance of the president, possibly tomorrow or probably tomorrow. The fact is that if you are inviting persons as National Assembly members, you have to have given a very straight uh, 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 areas that you want the president to touch. I'm not sure the, uh, the, 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 the assembly, the National Assembly has done that. For example, you can say that you want to know uh, uh, not, necess not something as bogus as what the president is doing. You want to know the level of uh, capacity of those fighting, why the, the gaps that are, that, that are in capacity, gaps in funding, gaps in coordination. Those are the expectations that this should have been pushed out earlier than now, rather than president coming there to give speech tomorrow. And everybody claps and the suffering and the agony continue. But let me now go to what you have asked, the question of uh, border closure. If you close border because of uh, 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 small arms that is being... That, 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 is, that is coming into country. The question now is that when you close border, there must be comprehensive plan. To mop those smart within, there must be uh, small arms 
and I'm uh, I'm going to to mob it. If we mob that the one in Nigeria, if we move from house to house, from suspicious places to the other, in order to mob these hands, even the one that have come into the country, if you feel that that is the purpose. So <coughs> I think this is after thought. There was a time they said that they wanted to protect farmer, uh, rice farmers. So. I, I don't know dancing to this two today and another tomorrow is not helping the country. That tells us that we are not serious about very critical policy. The border has been closed. What have we achieved in recess of it? Insecurity has gone up. Uh, crisis has gone up. You are not meeting rice production for local consumption. Uh, price of rice has gone up. Uh, 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 capa uh, uh, the capacity of people to purchase, the purchasing power of the people have been decimated, and what that and this is capable of creating cre uh, friction within families. And when there is friction within families, you are going to have. Uh, uh, children that will go out of the family of crime and violence and society continue to uh, reproduce this crisis this violence uh, violent crimes across board so these are issues uh, policy as shorting border must be comprehensively thought through what are we going to achieve if we close border it's just like a, uh, you don't want to rats to come into your house because many rats have come from outside into your house. When you close your door, are you not supposed to begin to look for the rats inside by fumigating them, by searching them out and destroying them from your house? Then you will be able to say, I have done this and I have taken control, a uh, 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 certain oh, control of, 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 of my house and I can be assured that my house will be rat, rat free. All right, still speaking about insecurity. Of this has been done in terms Sorry, sorry to cut you uh, in, but uh, time is uh, fast spent. But uh, still speaking about the insecurity level, uh, the president uh, made mention that uh, his administration has uh, done well in the northeast and south south in you know preventing the level of insecurity. I would like to ask you what do you think about that. Do you agree with him? It's not whether I agree or I don't agree, but where is the data? The data is saying contrary thing. What we are seeing is contrary. I don't know the angle the president is looking at it, but what is, vis what is visible is that the people of Northeast are having their heart in their hands. So, uh, uh, the fear, the intrusion of fear has not departed. They still live in fear, well-founded fear of victimization, well-founded fear of being harmed, what funded fear of being killed is there. Recently, just uh, uh, last week, you see the horrendous killing is <coughs> submarine uh, uh, that happened. We are uh, 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 cause of people who are killed. Uh, it's an issue that the president should begin to articulate. It's not about self praise. Don't praise yourself. Don't say that you are making achievement when you are not making. Look at, uh, uh, you are talking of notice, what of other part of the country? Even the notice is not true. You don't have the data. The data of horrendous uh, killing, brutal murder is still obvious and is palpable and is heart wrenching that we get from uh, the Northeast. And of course, the Northwest too. What you are having is expansion of crisis. What, what was localized in Northeast before? is spreading to other areas. I have said it, that uh, 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 terrorism is a fluid concept. If you are not able to isolate a particular area where they have taken root, and you deal with that, it's going to, because of that fluidity, it's going to flow into other parts of the country. And that is what we are having now, uh, snowballing into kidnapping, which has become a very huge demonic business in Nigeria, and are then snowballing into uh, 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 other violent crimes. 
that you have across the federation okay mr Gero, you know just like any some other lists like uh, um that uh, nigeria have been added to now just like uh, china iran pakistan and uh, saudi arabia nigeria have been added uh, to the list of countries violating uh, religious freedom and um, the federal government is denying this allegation uh, just like uh, you know the minister of information and culture culture that's uh, alaji lai muhammad um, he said that nigeria uh, pro jealously protects a religious freedom as enshrined in the country's constitution and takes seriously any infringement on this regard but my question for you is nigeria being added to this list what does it mean to the country What it means to country, I think uh, we should begin to interrogate situation intelligently. Last, uh, last uh, early this year, uh, specifically around June, the president of my uh, republic uh, of U.S. signed an executive order seeking for protection for uh, a religion uh, of people across the globe. And what is special is that. When the federal government is making reference to its sources or that there is no threat to religion in Nigeria, they should not be looking between only uh, Muslim and uh, uh, Christians. That is not what the whole thing is about. This is a country where over 300 uh, Shiites were killed and buried criminally because of their belief under the guise that they block uh, the chief of army staffs. It happened in Nigeria and the federal government, is he saying that that did not happen? The federal government, when you look at the appointment, appointment into position in a very plural society, particularly the security forces, what is that telling you? The balance. Look, uh, uh, diversity everywhere in the world. Look at how you manage diversity, whether it is ethnic diversity or religious diversity, even in appointment, even in position, especially that of a fragile state and a state that has their heart of uh, democracy. These are these are issues that U.S. aggregate in order to arrive at its analysis, not a phantom rejection. Of, uh, of the label by the federal government. Where is Lia Saribu today? What are we talking about Lia Saribu? Because that is a symbol, a symbol that represents a, 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 a belief that led to someone's captivity. So the federal government should have gone extra mile and people should have seen that something is done to rescue the poor girl who was abducted because of his religion. If you look at the, 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 the uh, ethnography uh, 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 in Kaduna State, the southern part of Kaduna State where you have crisis today too, of course, it's, it has religious familiar. connotation. These are issues that if you don't leave it to a, a state that is, uh, is, not la is not able or unwilling to manage it without direct intervention of the federal government, these are issues that have been aggregated to the basket of religious analysis that made that inform the action of the United States. The better, the best we can do in this situation is to see how we can begin to manage this diversity, whether of ethnic, whether of religion, in order to project a common uh, uh, United Nation that respects people's diversity. All right, Mr. Bero. Uh, let's just move forward and then talk about another interesting story and uh, this is uh, the back and forth with uh, former president Obasanjo and uh, uh, Are Ghani Adams and uh, in, in a former report uh, what we had was uh, both of them were at uh, pa, uh, um, Adibandra's um, house and there were speculations that there was a reconciliation between both of them of which uh, um, uh, Obasanjo came out to say that uh, there was no form of reconciliation and that the problem he had with Danny Adams was his way of life. And uh, in response to what uh, the former president said, uh, Ghani Adams has said that he doesn't have any reason to reconcile with the former president and noting that his guardian angel 
will not forgive him. What exactly do you think is playing out here? Well, I, I, there's nothing wrong in making peace where there is dispute. But I don't know what Ghani Adams is talking about when he talks of guiding an angel that will not allow him to go and meet uh, someone. Even God that I created those guardian angels, uh, uh, guardian angels, expect us to make peace with all men, all categories of people. But uh, and this is what you see when you have uh, people who, uh, especially the younger one that is uh, arrogant because he's robe in a in a, in a culture that does not uh, that is higher than him. The fact is that we have culture in Yoruba. If the elder annoys you and or offend you, they say that you will still apologize to the elder, even for offending you and everything. We do this. These are put in place by our culture so that we can live a stress-free life. We can live stress-free life. We can live life of cooperation. We can live life of. Uh, uh, of peace. But the fact is that what I will encourage him to do, of course, Abba Sanjo is old and he has his own attitude too, but then the fact is that somebody is older than you and if you have offended, uh, they, uh, they, uh, 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 like Abba Sanjo said, that he didn't offend him. What happened that he offended the state and he was arrested and he was detained for a long time in those areas of uh, uh, OPC uh, Bringer Church. But then, that is the story for two of them to resolve, if they want to resolve it. But what I just want uh, people to know is that whenever opportunity presents itself, you seek peace. If opportunity does not present itself, create a suitable atmosphere for peace to thrive, whether between individuals or among a groups of people. And it's good for the country if everybody should begin to see how we make peace with one another all this type of anger, provocation, and every other thing will be reduced. Uh, they should lay good examples. Ghani Adam, whether, uh, of course, is holding a position now, uh, uh, rightly or wrongly, and he should recognize that, and know that uh, uh, his talk has his own weight, and he shouldn't be uh, uh, flipsy with what he says, or what, uh, but concentrate on what he can do to achieve end of putting him in a position of responsibility. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Guero. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, of course, uh, that's Mr. Guero, the emergency. Yes, yes. Thank you. That is the executive uh, director for emergency and risk alert. And um, um, this uh, takes us to the end of the show today. But uh, remember that you can always like and follow us on our social media platforms, show on your screen, or visit our website, and that's uh, www.vanguardangel.com to get more of our top stories. We have other shows coming up after this, so always stay in tune, you know, to join us with our other programs. It's right from me, Damnola Obunshaki, and also from our co-host, Precious Chukudi. Thank you for watching. More Moderna vaccines against coronavirus focus on the second branch of this path pathway mRNA or messenger RNA. Now this has been used in the past for gene therapy or for cancer treatment, but is now being used for SARS-CoV-2. And the coronavirus has 29 main proteins, but the specific protein that's found on the outer membrane is known as the spike protein, which is really important for it to infect a healthy cell. Now what these companies did is they looked at the entire genetic makeup of SARS-CoV-2 and found the single mRNA that encodes for the instructions to make the spike protein. They isolated out this mRNA that can now be injected into us in the form of a vaccine to make one of these 29 proteins, thus not giving us an actual coronavirus. Now this mRNA is important as it's been structured to have a three prime and a five prime UTR, a coding region, and a place for the ribosome to start and stop. It's then been packaged into a lipid nanoparticle, which is critical for it to fuse with our human cells, thus allowing the vaccine, or mRNA, to now enter into our cells, this recruiting the ribosomes and initiation factors, since this RNA looks just like endogenous RNA that we would make ourselves. It will then use amino acids that we've consumed to build the spike protein. Now that's when our cells begin to say, wait a second, we haven't seen this protein before. So they elicit an immune response to bring in a macrophage to come and destroy this cell that just got the vaccine. 
But before the macrophage destroys this cell, it's going to remember that this spike protein was different. It was a foreign antigen that it's going to send the information to our lymphatic system, which is composed of B cells that are now going to make antibodies against this antigen, and T cells, which are now going to be on the lookout for this antigen in the future. So if we are newly infected with coronavirus, the antibodies that we've now produced are going to bind with the antigen present on the outside of the COVID-19 and direct the coronavirus for destruction by macrophages before the coronavirus can infect our cells. Face total shutdown nationwide. See page five. She overwhelmed by security challenges. Oh, oh. <laughs> Um, hello and welcome to Today in the News on Bangalore. Here on Today in the News, uh, we read and give in-depth analysis on some of the stories on the front pages of the paper. Also take your insightful comments of what's going on here in Nigeria and across the world. Join us Mondays through to Friday on Bangalore.